Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today I'm going to show you how to change the oil and filter for a 2023 Toyota Tacoma with the V6. So this is this Toyota Tacoma's uh, first oil change. It's basically a brand new truck, so that explains why it's really clean and nice under there. And it has some metal skid plates. I think those are only on the TRD. You might have plastic ones or maybe yours have fallen off and they're not there, but they should all remove exactly the same, whether they're metal or plastic. This is a really easy and straightforward maintenance item that you should be doing every 8,000 miles or so if you're using synthetic and you really should be in these newer engines. Doing this yourself is going to save you thousands of dollars over the lifetime of your own vehicle and I'll show you it's super super easy so let's go ahead and jump into it. So let's go ahead and get underneath the vehicle so I can show you where, where we are going to be working today. So as you can see on this model since it's a TRD off-road you know special package it has these metal skid plates one here and one here. I'm unsure if that's uh, standard or not maybe they're plastic on yours but I do know we're going to need you have to take this one off in order to service the oil filter this one back here though it looks like toyota gave you a nice cutout for the oil pan however i'm going to take this one off too but that's just for instructional purposes were i doing this off camera i would just remove the oil pan drain bolt so now i can take a 12 millimeter socket and remove all the bolts holding these skid plates up And kind of a nice feature right here and up here, the skid plate holds on with hooks once the bolts are gone, so it doesn't just fall straight on you. That's pretty cool. Neat feature. And then I'm going to do the rear one, and again, this is for instructional purposes. There we go. So now what I'm gonna do is take a 14 millimeter socket and remove the oil pan drain bolt. <clears throat> Usually you just need to break it loose and then you can get the rest by hand. Make sure you're wearing some eye protection. You don't want hot oil in your eye. So I can go ahead and remove our drain bolt. And all I'm gonna do is let that drain completely out. So once the oil is slowed to a drip, I'm just gonna go ahead and get the washer off there. Sometimes they're a little stuck. There we go. Make sure you get a new one of these and the link will be down below in the description for you. So here's the drain bolt we just removed. I've already cleaned it off very well. So it's nice and brand new once again. So the washer looks like this. I think this is just zinc covered with rubber on there. Sometimes it's tough to find the like official OEM washer, but I have these, I get them off Amazon. They're not a ton of money and you get a bunch of them and they're zinc with a rubber insert. And I found that these work really well. So you just fit it over the drain bolt and push it down like that and check it out. You'll have a nice rubber seal against that pan. So we can take that back to the truck. So the next thing we can do is grab some carburetor spray or brake clean, something like that. And we're just gonna spray it on that mating surface and make sure it's nice and clean so nothing gets in the way of our seal. We can grab our drain bolt and replace that guy. So I have the official Toyota torque spec for that drain bolt and they say 30 foot pounds. Uh, that seems like a whole bunch for that bolt. Honestly, I wouldn't even worry about a torque spec for that guy. Instead, what I would do is just grab a ratchet and tighten it down until it feels good. Like that. Because if you don't, if you do it too much, you can just pull these threads right out. And don't worry about it being, you know, super tight because it's just holding oil back. It's not like it's holding anything to anything else. And then we can just clean that off to make sure we don't get any false drippies and make us panic. Yeah, see, I think that's awesome. I think 30 foot pounds is too much, but that is the technical specification I got straight from Toyota. So take that as you will. So on the underside of the car, you might be wondering, hey, where's the oil filter? I don't see it anywhere. And believe it or not, this is your oil filter right here. And it has something I've never seen in person before. Uh, maybe it's a Toyota thing, but an oil filter drain port. So I think we just need a 3 8 extension and then we can remove that 
and uh, should give us access. So just grab a 3 8 extension. Uh, if you don't know, that is the common like ratchet size. So if you have a regular ratchet, you could use that as well. I'm just using an extension because I'm filming today. And it might dribble out just a teensy bit on you and that's completely normal. And you might be wondering, what the heck? Took the plug off, nothing's happening. Well, inside your oil filter box is this little plastic nozzle, doohickey, whatever you want to call it. And that screws into the bottom of the housing like this. And it's like a bicycle tire, like a valve, valve stem. And once you screw it in, it's going to let all that oil drain out. Check that out. Oh, isn't that just the coolest thing? <laughs> that is awesome. Excuse me while I go sell all my other cars and buy only Toyotas, because that is genius. And once the oil is done flowing, we can just go ahead and remove our little plastic apparatus there. There we go. Maybe wipe it off so it doesn't drip on us while we're working. Oh, look at that, an O-ring came out. So let's go ahead and take that O-ring as well. Can we get it? Yeah, we did. So grab that O-ring. I didn't really see it because I'm at a strange angle, but make sure you grab that O-ring um, and just get it out of there. You can just throw that guy away. We don't need him anymore. So to remove this oil filter housing, you actually have to have a special socket. It's the best way to go about it because you don't want to ruin the filter housing. And make sure it's on correctly like that so it's fully seated. And I'll have a link down below in the description to this socket and then we can just turn it to the left. Have your oil catch ready. There we go. And then the housing should come off with minimal drippage. That wasn't bad at all. So now what we can do is remove our old filter element and set that aside. Grab our new one. This is an AC Delco PF2259 and the link is down below in the description for you. And we can just set that to its new home. And you see how at first is a little not concentric. You don't want that. You want to make sure it's nice and in the middle. Now we can flip the housing over and get the old O-ring off. Set that aside and we're going to get our new one out of our package. And we can put that on into its home. Just roll it down until it is sitting in this groove right there. That's where it needs to sit. And then on the bottom of the housing, we are going to grab the other O-ring <coughs> out of our package. And we're gonna put that in its little house. Huh. Oh, there we go. Just like that. We're gonna grab a dab of oil on our finger and then just apply it to that O-ring there. And then we can put the cap back on. I'm just gonna snug this down real quick. There we go. That should be plenty. And then on this O-ring that is going around this housing, grab some oil on the end of your finger and just apply a nice film over it. Just like that, fantastic. So now what I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna grab some carburetor spray and I'm just gonna spray it up into the filter housing itself. And I'm just gonna give that a nice wipe down, a good cleaning so that way our new O-rings will seal really well. Our new O-ring, I should say. That's what's doing the work. This is right up there on that surface. And we just want to make sure that's nice and clean. Yeah, like that. That <laughs> looks great. And then we can put our filter back, making sure that filter hasn't shifted in there, making sure it's still all lined up and concentric, which mine is. Making sure the O-ring is in its home. And then make sure that your socket is loaded up correctly. Make sure it has a nice good purchase on it like that. And then we're going to tighten this guy down to 18 foot-pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench, that's okay. Just maybe like one arm tight be sufficient. That's not very tight at all. So there you go. And you can snug up this bottom cap too. 
And that bottom cap is 10 foot-pounds. I'm not gonna measure it, I'm just gonna feel it out like that. I think that's perfectly good. And then we can replace our metal skid pegs underneath with our 12 millimeter bolts. And the torque spec for that is 22 foot-pounds. But I'm just gonna use my electric impact then. put on our skid plate for the front, putting the hooks on first, just there. Pretty cool feature, I think. So now we can get underneath the hood and remove our oil cap here. And it has the viscosity written right on it, 0W20. And we can place a nice clean funnel. Kind of help us out there. There we go. Here's the oil I'm using today, Castrol Edge. It is a full synthetic, 0W20. Uh, it even says right on there for GM, Honda, Toyota, and hybrids. So this is my oil of choice for today, and the link will be down below in the description. Honestly, any full synthetic that's 0W20 is going to be just fine. As for the amount, it says 5.9 quarts, so as near as makes no difference, I would call that 6 quarts. And there we go, that was our sixth quart in, so we can remove our funnel and place our cap. Get that funnel out of there and put our cap back on. So now what I'm gonna do is start the engine, let it run for about 45 seconds, just to get, just to be sure that the oil is getting everywhere it needs to go, and then I'm gonna check the level, just to be double sure. And while it's running, make sure that, you know, it's actually getting oil pressure, because if it's not building oil pressure, you've probably mucked something up with the filter. And then I'm going to wait about maybe 30 seconds to a minute to uh, kind of let the oil basically fall back down into the pan so I can get an accurate reading. I just want to make sure that the oil filter has been completely full and the oil cooler's full, but you know, they essentially want you to run it so that way it's at normal operating level and then we can check it again. And it's a good idea at this time to look underneath the vehicle to make sure it's not just gushing oil out all over the ground. So here is our oil dipstick. Pull that all the way out. Wipe that off with a shop towel. Paper towel works too. And then plunge it all the way down. Like that. Bring it up and we can see what our oil level's at. <laughs> Might be a little tough to see because new oil is just so darn clean. But it is right just a hair above the second dot, which is totally fine. I'd run that all day, so yeah. I'd go six quarts. Six quarts is good. So that is how to replace the oil and filter on a 2023 Toyota Tacoma with that V6. Like I said, this is super, super easy. This is super approachable, and it's gonna save you literally thousands of dollars over the lifetime of your vehicle, because if you think about it, it's gonna, they're gonna charge you about 130 bucks, maybe more to do this at you know a regular shop or a dealer or whatever. It's only gonna cost you maybe $40 in materials. That adds up over the lifetime of your truck. So it's always important to do the maintenance yourself and you know it's done correctly because you put the new filter in and you put the new oil in. Who knows what they're doing behind the scenes at any random mechanic you take it to. And that sense of pride is really there that it's done correct. Thank you so very much for watching. If you found this video helpful at all, please consider giving a like or subscribing. It really helps my channel out. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.